Dumfries and Galloway. Its magical forests, hidden glens with sparkling locks, and the glistening 200 mile coastline make it a truly magnificent place to escape to. And although you won't struggle to find space around you, this region in southwest Scotland has communities proud to live in such a spectacular landscape. Its small population of around 150,000 people live amongst nearly 80 towns, villages and hamlets. Remote? Yes, there's just one motorway here, but if you've got transport, it's easy to explore. This is rural living at its best. It's just heaven on earth. It also boasts the mildest climate in Scotland, and with more summer daylight hours than you get further south, there's more time to take in the views. I think Dumfries and Galloway is often an overlooked area. People seem to think that they want to go further north to the Highlands, but it's a bit of a hidden gem. It's just beautiful, really. <laughs> I mean, if anybody wants to move to Dumfries and Galloway, I'd say, just do it. Pack your bags, load your car up, get up here. It's, what are you waiting for? Just recently, it's been young professionals and families that have been putting their roots down here. Although traditionally, it was retirees like today's buyer. But I bet you she could still give those young guns a run for their money, albeit from the back of a motorbike. The best way to see the world is to do it from a bike. Meet motorbike enthusiast Wendy and her twin sister Gail. Wendy doesn't do slow down. No, I, I'm not so. going to slow down. You can slow down when you lay down. That's my philosophy. Wendy lives with her husband in the Lake District tourist town of Dalton in Furness, but it's no longer giving her the tranquility she craves. The Lake District is stunningly beautiful. But because of that, it's busy. We're extremely keen motorcyclists and our joy is riding the roads, hopefully with very little traffic, seeing the scenery. You can't do that in the Lake District unless you go at six in the morning or nine o'clock at night. I and mean, it's getting worse. You know, we're looking for new adventures and new experiences. I had a serious motorcycle accident in 2013. I was married at the time, my husband got killed and eventually I lost the use of my left arm and my arm had to be amputated. After years of surgery and rehabilitation, in 2020, Wendy married fellow bike enthusiast Adrian. Now the couple want to buy their first home together and making that move with them is their beloved cat Sheba. But it'll be Wendy's sister Gail who will be keeping her company as she explores what Dumfries and Galloway has to offer. I'm very excited. I think this is a chapter that Wendy needs after the long battle that she's had. Um, and I think this is going to be great. Wendy and her husband want a detached property in a rural location with two to three bedrooms and a separate utility room. But probably the most important part of this search is a double garage, or at least the space to build one, so the couple can safely house their 12 motorbikes. They've set aside a budget of £350,000 for their exciting new chapter together in the Scottish countryside. As beautiful as the Lake District is, it does get really busy in the summer, so I can understand them wanting to get out of there and heading up to rural Scotland. It's an amazing place, and their hobbies, getting out on their motorbikes, I can tell you firsthand that these are the roads to do it on. I've arranged to meet Wendy and Gal in the town of Dumfries on the banks of the River Nith. Here we are, eh? So the move is for you, Wendy, and you've come along as moral support or as guidance? What's your part? To be realistic and, and to be what, absolutely what she wants. And what Adrian wants. And what Adrian wants, yeah, and Wendy's what husband. husband wants. That's right, of course, because you're not moving here on your own. You've got your partner 
Adrian. Yeah. How does he feel with not being involved with the, the planning here? He's OK. He trusts my judgment. He's happy that Gail's with me to sort of put his voice in my head. But he doesn't like the limelight, so he's quite happy to stand in the background. You sit here and you talk about Adrian with, with a big smile on your face. I mean, it seems like you're very compatible in life and with your hobbies. Oh, we are. We are. He's amazing. I never thought I'd find somebody again. But, yeah, Adrian came along and... He, uh, he's just a gift. He's lovely. Well, I think that we should go and make an effort to go and find you and him that perfect place. I think we should. Mm -hmm. Should we have a wonder? Okay, let's get the go. show on the road, shall yeah, we? Yeah. Let's go. Day one of our house hunt, and we're heading to the tiny village of Aldgirth in the Nithsdale Valley. The village has a shop, but a 10 minute drive away, Wendy and Adrian will find everything they need in the thriving community of Thornhill including a couple of supermarkets, a pub and two hair salons. Off the main road from Thornhill, down a quiet country lane, we find the first house we've lined up for Wendy and Gail to view. And here we are, the first of the properties. I think the location is amazing and the size of it is beautiful. The outside space looks good. It does, doesn't it? It looks yeah. rather big, <laughs> yeah. which is good. We need that. It's a good 8 out of 10. Yeah, definitely. From outside. This is exactly what I'd, I'd like. <laughs> well, should we go and have a look? Yeah. I'm hoping I can turn that 8 out of 10 into a 10 out of 10 by the end of the viewing. Originally built in the 1840s, the house started life as a pair of cottages, which were, at some point, knocked together and modernised to create this single-storey home. The bedrooms are at the front of the house, so that's where we're starting this tour. And this takes us through to the first of the bedrooms. Wow, that's amazing. What do you think? I'm mesmerised by the potato. Yeah. It's beautiful and it's such a great room, isn't it, proportion-wise? Yeah. And all the storage there with the wardrobes. I wouldn't change a thing in here. <laughs> it's very Wendy. Is it? Absolutely, yeah. Let's move on, shall yeah. we? Yeah, it's super. Opposite this bedroom, on the other side of the entrance hall, is a second bedroom. That's another good-sized room. Isn't it just? Mm. Just didn't expect the size of the rooms. Nice views. Stunning, aren't they? Yeah. They really are. You wake up to that every morning. How blessed. Yeah. You'd be comfortable in here. I'd be very happy here. And I reckon she'll be suitably impressed with the space on offer in the lounge at the rear of the property. Wow. <laughs> it's another brilliant. good size room, isn't it? It's absolutely beautiful. It's just perfect size, isn't it? Like for two of us and the cat. <laughs> Log burner. Yeah. Tick. We've yeah. got one at home, and yeah, my husband would be loath to leave it. I was worried that we'd have small rooms yeah. and not a lot of light, but no, it's just beautiful. It's light, it's here, you know, on a, on a cold winter night, watching the weather outside with the log burner going. Yeah, it's just tick, tick, tick. It's just yeah, lovely, it's, it's isn't lovely. it? You know, with those big smiles on your faces, I think I'll leave you to explore the rest of the property and I'll see you outside shortly. Lovely, thank, thank you. you. See you in a second. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I feel so sorry for Adrian. He's not here to experience the smiles Wendy's having. And I think she's already decided that it doesn't matter what he thinks so much, she loves it. Oh, bathroom? The bathroom. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, and a built-in shower. Oh, wow. We didn't expect that. No. Bath for Adrian. Oh, he'd love that. He loves his bath. Misses that in the house. Yep. That's bigger again, isn't it? Yeah. Than what you think. It's true, there's nothing cottagey about the proportions of this cottage. Oh, so this is the kitchen. Oh, I like this. Yeah. It's just a perfect size, isn't it? The ceilings again are so high. I'm loving this. Range. This range is gorgeous. Mm. Absolutely perfect. I can perfect. see in here. Yep, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Lovely. The house sits on a plot of three quarters of an acre and the generous back garden is mostly lawn. Absolutely stunning, isn't it? Quite low maintenance, and it mm. goes right down to the bend in the road there. It's wonderful, isn't it? I didn't expect all of this land it's with it. a lot of land. I don't know what we do yet. We're going to ride on more for the grass. <laughs> <laughs> now we come to the deal breaker, 
a double garage or workshop in which Wendy and Adrian's 12 beloved motorbikes can be stored. There isn't one here, but at the side of the house are several outbuildings that could make way for a custom designed and built motorbike store. But I suppose that depends on if you can afford it. I mean, how, how much do you think this is on the market for? Oh, well, I'm hoping we can afford it, so fingers crossed, about £320,000. OK. I'm going to say 330000 just because of the land and the location. Well, you're closest, Wendy, but you're still way off. This property is for offers over £230,000. You're £90,000. No way. Wow. Really? Property in Scotland is sold through a sealed bid system. How much you actually pay depends on how much interest there is. If lots of potential buyers make offers, the price rises. This house went on the market just this week and has been inundated with viewings, so it's reasonable to expect that it could sell for more than the £230,000 asking price. Even so, Wendy and Adrian would still have plenty of money left to make the changes they want. So Adrian gets a state-of-the-art brand new workshop. He'd love it. Yes, yeah. he'd be happy. <laughs> That's great. So why don't I leave you to have a wonder, think about how that might look, what you might do with that money, how you could build something. Yes. And I'll see you shortly. OK, thank you. Perfect. <laughs> On the market for offers over £230,000, this detached Victorian cottage is in an idyllic rural location. It has two bedrooms, a good-sized living room and three-quarters of an acre of land. Most importantly, there's space to build a double garage to store Wendy and Adrian's motorbike collection. So this would work perfectly. Take the fence down, you've got access. And there's already a hard stand in there. Yep. Absolutely. We've got a really nice size garage there without disturbing any more of the land. Yeah, perfect. Adrian's going to absolutely love this. It's amazing. Knowing the price, I just can't believe that we could afford it and we could do all the things that we wanted to do. It just offers everything that we've asked for, really. I'm so happy. <laughs> fabulous. It's perfect. I can see Wendy and Adrian living here. The location's fabulous. Wendy's really excited. So I can't wait for her to get in touch with Adrian and let him know because he's going to be really happy. All right. Did it feel different going round with the figures in your head, knowing how much things might be costing? Oh, it did, certainly. Well, we started with a very high bar here. You have. I hope the next property that I show you is going to keep as many smiles on your faces. OK. <laughs> let's go and have a look, shall we? Yes, I do. Thank you. Kakubri on the beautiful Solway coast. A lively harbour town which should give Wendy and Gail the chance to discover a little of the life and soul in this region beyond its scenic landscape. Easily accessible from the M74, Kakubri is 25 miles west of Dumfries. There's an hourly bus service to the county town or you can drive there in around 45 minutes. From Dumfries, there are regular trains to Carlisle and Glasgow. Kakubri has long supported a busy fishing trade. It's the only working harbour on this stretch of coastline. The town has also championed generations of artists, a tradition maintained today by a flourishing group of painters and craft workers, which has led to the town being called the Artist Town. Look at these, these are different, aren't they? Japanese. See the brush strokes almost, can't they? It's well known for its rows of pastel coloured houses and the wide selection of independent family run shops. Very nice card, that. Very nice. Very nice shop. There's a monthly farmers market and a year round calendar of events for locals and visitors. It's lovely. There's some lovely beaches and nice walks, coastal walks to go on, hill walking. Is there a lot of yeah. nice roads for riding motorbikes in? Absolutely. There's a lot of motorbikes come through the town in the mm. summer especially, mm. so yeah. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Local author Kathleen Hart knows firsthand just how restorative this part of Scotland can be. 
I think it's a forgotten corner of Scotland, and um, I think that's what attracted me first of all. It's quiet, it's quite remote. Kathleen moved to the Scottish borders following a debilitating illness. She discovered wild swimming, began writing, and then published her memoirs. I swim in the sea every day. Wow. Um, I volunteer in the community shop. Is there things here that I could get my husband interested in? We're thinking about opening a men's shed. Oh, they're wonderful. Oh. I've heard of them. Yes, yeah. so retired men can go down and okay. share skills and yeah. teach the younger ones as well. Oh, he loves that. Well. Yes. He, loves, he loves anything to do with engines and he can turn his hand to anything. Sounds very handy. He, he, he is, is he? Yeah. Uh, he has got a brother. <laughs> <laughs> I need oh, a <laughs> <laughs> That's what I need. <laughs> I'm afraid we can't rustle up prospective partners. We can, however, do our bit when it comes to dream country homes. We're heading to the village of Eastridge on the shore of the Solway Firth. The nearest town, Annan, is a six minute drive from the village and has a good range of locally run shops, a supermarket, a post office, and several cafes and restaurants. On a residential street on the outskirts of East Riggs sits our next property. An immaculately presented detached bungalow that came on the market just five days ago. So here we are then, the second of the properties. It's obvious there's some huge differences between what you was looking at earlier and what we've got here. But your thoughts, what are they? It's a bigger property. Uh, it's a bit close to the road. So I'm a bit bothered about that for the cat, but I'm excited to go inside and have a look and see what it's got to offer. Let's get to the house, shall we? Okay, Come on then. Thank you. Built in the 1970s, the present owners have lived here almost 40 years and have extended and renovated the house during that time. Off the spacious entrance hall, there are four bedrooms. So this is the master bedroom. That's a lovely size, isn't it? Yeah. And light. And very light. A yeah. lovely view out over the garden. Yeah. This here is an ensuite bathroom. Okay. Wow. And on the other side of the bed, there is actually a walk in wardrobe. Oh, oh wow. Wow. <laughs> Everybody a needs wardrobe. a walk in wardrobe. It's decorated. Lovely, isn't it? It's lovely. Yeah. There are three more bedrooms on offer here, making four in total. A good sized double overlooks the front of the house a smaller double with a dressing area and a roomy single, as well as a very spacious family bathroom. Yep, this is a sizeable house and it gets even roomier in the lounge. And again, it's got that very light, airy feeling with the windows at both yeah. ends. It's lovely, yeah. very bright. Loving the stove. Yes, it's lovely, it's nice and spacious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can feel a very different vibe. Yeah. A very different vibe. <laughs> it's beautiful, but I think it's a bit big. And I think it's more a family home. I think for two people, we'd still be rattling around in it a bit, <laughs> really, with us on the cab. Well, I didn't expect that. It's not often you get told a property is too big, and Wendy hasn't seen the half of it yet. There's a good sized conservatory, and next to the lounge, a dining room which leads through to a really imaginatively designed kitchen. And here we are. Oh, wow. Oh, that's lovely. This is different. Isn't it just? Wendy likes quirky. I do. So you can see here, it's been refurbished, redone, and you've actually got like a mezzanine floor right. up the back there. So you've got a space to entertain at the top of the stairs. It's different. It is, isn't it? <laughs> Carrying your glasses of wine, that might be difficult. <laughs> <laughs> this property delivers another tick on Wendy's wish list. Oh, utility oh, room. utility room. It's what you wanted, isn't it? Yeah, so I haven't got one at home. I'd love a utility room. It's lovely space, isn't it? You could pick this up and... Add it down to the first house. Yeah. Yeah, it's lovely. Despite some positive reactions, the ladies still have this morning's cottage firmly in the forefront of their minds. However, what we're about to see might swing things and I'm pretty confident I've saved the best till last. Oh, wow. If you can't get 12 motorbikes wow. in there... Oh, yeah. wow, that's amazing. I'll wow. leave you 
to explore probably the most exciting room as far as you're concerned. <laughs> yes. And I'll see you in the garden in a moment. Okay, okay. excellent, thank you. Oh wow, look at this space. Adrian would love this. Absolutely. I can just see old bikes around here. Yep. Could even get the camper van in here, couldn't you we? You could. Fabulous space. Look at this. Oh. <sighs> I knew they'd appreciate the space on offer here. There's a generously sized garden too. South facing, it gets the sun all day and has views into the distance over the Solway Firth and Cumbria beyond. The garden's really pretty. It's the perfect size, yeah. not much to do. All right, well, you've seen everything now, the, the house and then the garden. Mm. What do you think this property's on the market for? Oh, I don't know. Um... I think it's quite top end because there's a lot to offer here. So I'm going to go for £340,000. OK. Four bedrooms, lots of space, lovely garden. I'm going to go £345,000. This is on the market for offers over £260,000. Really? Really. That's a surprise. It is, especially with the, 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 the garage space. Yeah. And... The owners of this spacious detached bungalow are looking for offers over £260,000. With four bedrooms, two reception rooms and an immaculately presented kitchen, the house sits on a generous plot with views of the coast and has that all-important double garage. My favourite part of this house has got to be the workshop and the garage. It's just an amazing space. What doesn't work for me here is the road outside the front of the house. It's too close to the house for the cat. There's a lot to love about this property. And whilst it might not be for Wendy and Adrian, it will be the perfect home for someone. For Wendy and her husband Adrian, this move is all about spending more time exploring the Scottish countryside on their bikes. With that in mind, we're stopping off at Drumburn Viewpoint, a popular picnic spot on the Solway coast, so that Wendy and her sister can meet a few members of the Galloway Motorcycle Club. So Gail, Wendy, I wanted to introduce you to Willie, and I think you can see why. Willie, I've enjoyed just driving the car through these roads. It must be something else on a motorbike. Yeah, and Galloway, you know, it's, you could run all day and, and, and every weekend and never be on the same road twice and have scenery like what you can see around about as you now. It's absolutely fantastic area for road bikes. You get out there on a motorbike and you're going along and you'll pick up the smell of the trees and then you'll get wild garlic. Yeah, you smell it, you're immersed in it. You feel it, you're part of it. And the seasons, all the seasons are beautiful. And it must feel good when you're, you're out there and you're riding together. Aye, well, there's a great feeling of camaraderie. So we're all like-minded people and we talk about the same things and have a great laugh and that's the social side of it, it's absolutely uh, brilliant, you know. And I understand you're the mechanic of the team. <laughs> that's right, yes. And I've loved motorbikes all my life and I can't think of anything else I'd rather be doing. So I'm semi-retired now and I still work on motorbikes every day. So is there a lot of uh, Andy garages near here to get MOTs and that sort of thing? Yes, there are two places in Dumfries. That's excellent news, yeah. No problem. I'll have to get your number, guys. No problems. <laughs> <laughs> when Wendy and Adrian move here, they'll have a ready-made group of friends with whom to share their love of motorbikes. If you're feeling the draw of Dumfries and Galloway's dramatic landscape, here's everything you need to know about property prices. The average price of a detached house in Scotland is just over £286,000. In Dumfries and Galloway, it's significantly lower, at around £211,000. To bag a bargain in the borders, you'll need to be quick. This time last year, properties took an average of 57 days to sell. Today, they're taking just 36. In short, the time it takes to sell a house is going down and the sale price is going up. Well, I can understand why people 
want to move here, but what's the market like? It's very buoyant at the moment. It's definitely a seller's market. So what sort of properties are really on the, the hot list at the moment? I'd say anything with a garden. Um, if it's got a, a, a work from home space, a, a, even a garden office, a really popular Coastal properties have always been popular in this area because we are a coastal region. Um, so anything with a sea view or by the sea does very well. So have you seen a change in the dynamics of the people that are moving to the area? Yeah, traditionally this area was more retirement um, area, but now people are looking for very good schools, uh, outside space, so young families and young professionals can, can move to this area quite easily. And when they do, here's a taster of the kinds of properties that they could consider. This former police station in the village of Dunscore is now a detached two-bed home that's on the market for offers over £225,000. Or make a splash with this four-bed bungalow near Annan that comes with a private hire pool business and is valued at £475,000. For £170,000, you could be the proud owner of this two-bed terrace in the town of Gatehouse of Fleet. And this handsome four-bed detached property in the market town of Castle Douglas has a large garden and a separate garage with workshop and is on the market for offers over £300,000. Those who do embark on a totally new life in the countryside rarely regret it as Jason and Yvonne discovered when they moved to a remote island in Scotland's Inner Hebrides three years ago. We moved to the stunning Isle of Tyree, which is about three and a half hours by ferry off the west coast of Scotland in the middle of the Atlantic. We moved here from London where we lived on the banks of the Thames and we lived a very corporate life, often working seven days a week, not having really any time to enjoy ourselves and we really wanted to change our life and this is where we ended up. This is the place we call home at the moment. We are building our own home and in the meantime, we are comfortably living here. One of the things we absolutely love about living here is the views. There's just endless views everywhere you look. Huge landscapes and big horizons. Good evening. I thought I would uh, show you our end of day routine. Um, this is Pepper. After a chance conversation with our crofter neighbour, we ended up with a small flock of sheep um, and uh, it's completely changed our lives. Jason and Yvonne now run a small business making woolly hats using the fleece from their small flock of sheep and most importantly they have time to revel in the glorious surroundings of their new home. Typical Sunday for us, barbecue with DV and Claire, some great friends from the island followed by a walk on a beach that is basically outside the front door. And you couldn't ask for a better way to end the day, even when it's great and overcast like you can see behind me now. It makes every day fantastic. Well, there you have it. Living proof, if ever it were needed, that moving to the countryside really can be life-changing. Spending time with Wendy and Gail yesterday really made me understand why Wendy's brought her sister along. She's not just thinking about herself, she's got to consider Adrian and also Sheba the cat. And I'm just starting to see how much of an influence Sheba is having on this decision. Let's hope today's Mystery House can deliver for all of the family. The final stop on our tour of Dumfries and Galloway is the tiny village of Bell McLennan, about a 40 minute drive west of Dumfries. It's a remote spot. Two miles away is St John's town of Dorai, which some argue holds the record for the Scottish place name containing the largest number of words. The locals simply call it Dorai. On the banks of the Water of Ken, the town has everything Wendy and Adrian could need, including a shop, a pub, a petrol station, a post office and the local police station. Off a quiet country road, accessed by its own private track, sits our mystery house. And before I show it to Wendy and Gail, I'm going to give you a sneak preview. So here it is then, the mystery house. Now look at it, picture perfect and in fact very similar to the first property I showed Wendy. And if you listen, I can't hear a single car. 
I think even the cat's going to be happy here. This 150-year-old picture postcard property is incredibly rural and very private, which I think will really appeal to Wendy and Adrian. It's been owned by the same family for 63 years and is being marketed as in need of modernisation and upgrading. OK, yes, it does need work and that's one of the reasons it is the mystery house. But it's got plenty of rooms and even more potential. I'm very excited by this option. I just hope Wendy will feel the same. So here we are then. Welcome to Bell McLennan. I understand you know the area already. We do. We know the local roads. We do a lot of motorcycling around here. Oh, wow, really? Yes. So that means you probably know more about the area than I do. But what do you think of the house? I think it's really interesting. <laughs> it's rural. It's oh, rural. it is. Yeah. But yeah. please, Gail, when Wendy says interesting, is that good interesting, bad interesting, or just interesting? That's good interesting. Well, Wendy, it's about to get a whole lot more interesting inside. We're starting our viewing in the main reception room. OK, here's the first of the rooms I'd like to show you. Ah. <laughs> Ah. Ah. We've just realised what the mystery is. It's, it's a renovation project. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, me. Be rumbled. Mm. You called me straight away. How do you feel about that? No, I don't want to do renovation. No. <laughs> oh, you know, we don't mind a bit of decorating, but uh, this is a bit more than just decorating, isn't it? Crikey, that's not the start I wanted. The living room's in fairly good nick, so that doesn't bode well for what they'll make of the kitchen. Oh, come on, you're not seeing it for what it could be. Look at it, you've still got these beams through to the ceiling. You've got the Arga there. Is what? this the kitchen? It could be your kitchen, I suppose. There's actually another room round to the side that has got the sink and other utilities in it as well. There's a real opportunity to create a wonderful home here, subject, of course, to all the relevant planning consents. This kitchen, the dining room next door, and the downstairs bathroom could all be knocked through to create a spacious open plan kitchen living dining room. The three outbuildings at the rear could become a wonderful garden room or a tranquil bedroom suite. It's stunning. I mean, it's lovely from the outside, and I can see, knock a few walls down, move a few things around, I can see what it could be. Uh, it's just not for me. I, all I can see when I look round is the time and the money it's going to take to get it uh, exactly how I want it to be. And I'd rather be spending that time and money travelling abroad on my motorbike. I get it. It's just too big a project for Wendy and her husband Adrian to consider. But there's no doubt that this location has captured our heart. Oh, look at that view there. It's stunning. Yeah. See, the area, yeah, outside. I'd love to live here. Upstairs, there are three bedrooms, and from all of them, the surrounding scenery can be enjoyed. This is the biggest bedroom. Yeah, you could do something with this, couldn't you? Definitely. Again, the views. You can't beat them, can you? No, it's beautiful. And much of the immediate surroundings would actually belong to the owners of this property, since it comes with 10 and a half acres of land. Oh, gosh, that's wow. massive. I don't know what I'd do with that. No, that's the beauty of it, because the farmer will rent these fields off of you to keep his sheep on, so no maintenance at all. Oh, an income. you got an income at the same time there. Excellent. Talking of money, yeah. how much do you think this is on the market for? I'm going to go quite on that. I'm going to go £200,000. I think because of the land, and especially now we've got the fields, I think I'm going to go £250,000. You're bang on. No oh, way. You are bang on, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. £250,000 it's on the market for. You're dying over my all week. <laughs> <laughs> this detached cottage has three bedrooms, two reception rooms and heaps of potential. Tucked away at the end of a private track in a very rural location, it comes with ten and a half acres of land. Wow. It's beautiful, it's stunning. It would be lovely for somebody. I mean, imagine having this on your doorstep. I know. 
I think for me it's the right location and the wrong house. If I could have a whole other house here, then this would be perfect. As soon as we turned into the drive, I just thought this is going to be amazing because the scenery around it is, is lovely. All right, you're seeing everything you wanted to? Yes, we have, yes. yes. OK, well, let's go and get warmed up, shall we? Cup of tea, coffee? Yes. lovely. You can't head to Dumfries and Galloway without stopping by the wedding capital of Scotland. Gretna Green has been synonymous with romance and rebel lovers since 1754, when England's new marriage act came into force. It meant that young people had to be over the age of 21 if they wished to wed without their parents' consent. The Scots, however, continued with their ancient marriage traditions, which allowed anyone over the age of 15 to marry, so long as they were not closely related nor in a relationship with anyone else. Soon enough, young English couples were dashing over the border to become husband and wife. Susan Houston and her family own the Gretna estate, and she can explain more about the traditions here. This was the first place that they came to, found somebody in the village that could marry them, and the blacksmith was usually in the forge doing his work, and he was um, a, pers a professional person that could just conduct the ceremony in those days didn't have to be a registrar or a minister of the church. It could just be anybody, as long as they were classed as professional, and a yeah. blacksmith would have been professional enough. Absolutely, yes. They would get hold of two witnesses, which was all you needed, and it was just the clink of the anvil, and that was you married. And the whole wedding ceremony is still based around the anvil? Absolutely. The legend had it that as a blacksmith would heat iron in the fires to join two pieces of metal, so two hands and two hearts and two lives are joined over the anvil. And even today, no wedding is complete without a, a bang of the anvil. The ceremonies held here at the Blacksmith's Forge became known as anvil or blacksmith weddings. And today I have the great privilege of witnessing one. Although this bride and groom have not eloped and have every blessing from their families. Well, it's starting to get busy in here now. I'm at a real blacksmith wedding at Gretna Green. The groom, Bob, and his bride-to-be, Sam, are one of 1,000 couples who get married in the original blacksmith shop every year. They've come all the way from Nottinghamshire to tie the knot in an intimate ceremony with their family and friends. I, Bob, accept you, Samantha, as my lawful wedded wife. No Anvil wedding is complete without the customary clang. So today, you've been married by Vicky the Blacksmith. <laughs> well, firstly, a massive congratulations to you both, but I've got to ask, why did you choose Gretna Green? My family's Scottish. My father was a fifer uh, from the Kingdom of Five, so and we had, uh, my, fr my father had friends locally. So we've been going to Scotland since I was, you know, a, a wee bairn, so, you know, to Scotland to me is very special. And then when I suggested to Sam we get married, and I suggested Gretna, Sam was up, Sam was up for it, so. Yeah, because I think it's just a romantic. Just a beautiful place. And special place to get married. It's very intimate yeah. and it's very emotional. I find it very emotional, really, really lovely. This is where people would elope to with the, the village being right on the border to England. That's not the situation for you two, is it? No. <laughs> we're a bit too old for that. Yeah, yeah. you've got everyone's <laughs> blessing, I hope. Yeah, well, they, all, they all know we're here today, so, yeah. Thank you very much for your time today, and absolute good luck and congratulations. Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much. Thank you. Over the last few days, Wendy and Gal have seen some fantastic countryside, visited some lovely villages and seen three very different properties. But let's not forget, Wendy's not moving on her own. She's got to take into consideration the cat. Oh, and of course, Adrian, her husband. 
So, come on then, how have you found the experience over the last few days? It's just cemented what I felt anyway, that this is the place that I feel that I need to live and, and my husband needs to live here with me as well. So we know the area is right for you, but what about the properties? I mean, I think it's fair to say that there's one standout of the three. Definitely, uh, house number one, yeah. definitely. Yeah, the minute I set eyes on it, it was absolutely beautiful. And then going into the garden and seeing what we could do with that garden and with the land at the side of it to, to get the uh, workspace we need for the motorbikes, everything was just right. The, everything that we asked for was there. Well, I understand that even whilst I was showing you two other properties, you were sneaking back to the first. Yes, I did. Uh, I had a drive back up there and uh, the owner's son was there. So I went and had a, a talk with him. And he showed us around the house again and the garden. And he showed us the red squirrels in the garden and, and all sorts of wildlife. And Wendy was just still completely taken by that point. So come on then, what are the next steps? I know you've been in contact with Adrian. Adrian's coming up on Saturday and uh, we've got an appointment to go and have a second viewing at the house. And uh, we'll see where that takes us. Do you know, I'm so pleased to hear that. You must be very excited for her. I'm very excited for her because house number one will offer her the peace and serenity that she's searching for. Well, I'm so glad we found you something that you're happy with and I wish you and Adrian all the very best with it. Oh, thank you very much. Well, I think it's fair to say it was love at first sight for Wendy and her head and her heart were always going to stay with that beautiful cottage. I'm sure that if she does decide to move up here with Adrian and of course Sheba the cat, they're going to have a wonderful time in this beautiful part of Scotland. Join us again soon for another Escape to the Country. Wendy and Adrian returned to the house in Allgirth, but in the end decided it wasn't for them. However, I'm delighted to say that they found the property half an hour down the road. Their offer has been accepted and they hope to start their new life in Dumfries and Galloway very soon. If you would like to escape to the country in Scotland, Wales, England or Northern Ireland and need our help, you can apply online at bbc.co.uk forward slash take part.